Brothers and sisters of the congregation, it's your boy, Brother Greatness, and right now you're listening to Wrestling with Entertainment. Hallelujah. Hello, my name is Charlie, and you're listening to Wrestling with Entertainment. Hello, 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 and welcome to the show with Wrestling with Entertainment. Previewing and reviewing the latest social on WWE, AEW, New Japan, and everything in between every Saturday, and interviewing all your favorite wrestlers every Tuesday and Wednesday on YouTube and Castbox, sponsored by Rogue Energy and Playoff One. I am, of course, your host, that guy, James J., alongside the American Scooter Dust. Yes, okay, uh. Let's get, let's get you on right. Uh, make sure, uh, it's three hookers, two of them have to be redheads, uh, six orders of chicken lo mein, uh, two kitty pools, one with raspberry jello, one with lime jello, um, and, um, well, you know what, let's throw in, you know what, throw a couple of, uh, egg rolls and midgets. Why not? All right, James, are we ready to go? Dot, uh, the views of, uh, reflected of Scooter Dust do not reflect the views of Wrestling with Entertainment. What? Please send what? your what? hate tweets at, what? What? at Scooter Dust. What? 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 What the fuck are you talking about, man? What? God damn it! Well, uh, besides, uh, your exploits, um, we've had some pretty good Ex- well, I had some ex- good exploits this week. Um, interviewed uh, Brutal Greatness on Tuesday and um, Charlie Cruel on Wednesday. Uh, two incredible interviews. Great in uh, different and different ways. Um, Brutal Greatness, uh, fantastic. Go over his uh, stint with Limitless, um, religion, um, and a lot more, a couple of laughs, and uh, definitely one you want to go back and watch. And then on Wednesday, Charlie Cool, um, incredible interview. We talk about uh, Mickey Knuckles, uh, Madman Pondo, uh, wrestling with autism, um, a few uh, having her, the date she made her wrestling debut tattooed on her knuckles, and a lot, a lot more. Cannot, um, uh, recommend more. Um, and it, the interviews get even harder. Um, next week, we got Eliza Hayes on the A, uh, everyone's favorite flower child. Um, you don't want to miss that one. We talk about, um, making her own ring jacket. Um, mental health and pro wrestling, um, getting on cage match, which seems as a, a harder um, process than one might expect, and a lot more. I mean, they're based in Germany, so. Well, that would make sense. Um, and on uh, Wednesday, we got Sam Beal. Um, all the calls for all the girls, um, the Terminator, we talk everything in Path Wrestling, uh, becoming a father very, very soon. Um, uh, a lot more, and um, yeah, you definitely see um, Sam in a different way than you have ever heard him uh, on any other interview, so you definitely need to check that one out. I remember the day I became a father. I said father, oh. not father. <laughs> Which word is he saying? Only you can decide. Next week, uh, the 15th, we got L. Espartano. The 16th, we got Jocelyn Navarro. Um, the 23rd, we have uh, the promoter of Pizza Party Pro, Dan Scotty. Um, you can go into our YouTube already, hit the notifications button, uh, when those interviews drop, so you can listen to them, uh, when they air. And for one of those, 
they do something unprecedented on wrestling with something that is very very difficult to do but you'll have to listen to all three to find out which one and it might not even be for from an interview that we've even announced did that just blow your mind but blue blue something <laughs> now uh now that we're done putting ourselves over it's a great day for wrestling because we are wrestling with the news. Um, earlier this week, it came out that um, Shinsuke Nakamura will uh, be fighting the Great Muda for Pro Wrestling Nova on January first, twenty twenty-three. How big of an announcement is that, Scooter? I believe uh, wrestling fans all over the world went pro wrestling. No way! Um, this is truly monumental if you know the current state of wrestling relations between the two main companies in America and the two main companies in Japan. <laughs> it's... It's... great for us because I can't imagine that the WWE wouldn't and let Nakamura do this without getting something out of it, like the rights to air it on the network. And I wondered if this was a way of Triple H sort of dropping hints that pro wrestling, the pro, pro wrestling Nova library could be joining the WWE Network on Peacock. I'm not entirely sure of that per se because Nova has their own network on uh, mine. But mm, I could mm, see, mm. you know, maybe certain events. Getting onto well, Peacock, especially the well, ones that have WWE names associated with it. Yeah, yeah well, it, it, I mean, it would start out as them, you know, as it did with you know, the other promotions. It started out with them airing a couple of events, probably, probably even a joint event. I, I, I would expect we, we. To, oh god, they, they are going to Europe between the day of the match, which is January 3rd, and WrestleMania. Um, is, is, is there an Asian tour? I don't know. I don't think so. But I would not be surprised if we maybe even get a WWE Pro Wrestling Noah joint event. Um, and who knows where relations with uh, between WWE and New Japan will be. It, 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 it really seems like New Japan is uh, coming out uh, the winner in this with Shibata in AEW for the next couple of months. He's going to be there for yeah. a couple of months? Well, he's entering, he's feuding with, uh, see, that, that that's how not memorable it was. Um, oh, God. This is the best, the, he's with the best friends. Oh. God. See, I can't even remember who he, uh... 
Who do you think have to confront? Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy and yeah. 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 He came out with the best friends, but uh. Um. Uh, yeah, but yeah, g given that. Oh no! Oh well, no! Never mind. I take that back about Shibata being there for a couple of months. Um, yeah, he'll be there for. He was there for Rampage yesterday. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and he'll probably be just as gone. Um. I mean, this clearly has to mean we're getting some, you know, some Japanese superstars in the Royal Rumble. It 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 has to be. That, that's gotta, I mean, that's gotta, gotta, if we're talking about Noah alone, the only name I could tell you recognizably that could in the Royal Rumble and people have a comprehension of who they are is either Great Muda or Mara Fuji. Those would be the two names that have a chance of getting recognized in the Royal Rumble. If we're talking about New Japan, then I mean, there's more names out there that we can talk about. But well, here, here's the thing here. Noah, Prosing Noah, reached out to AEW first. Because, if people remember, back at Grand Slam, uh, one of the things I got to witness in person, um, the great Muda, uh, Showing up on AEW as part of his, uh, you know, last match tour. Um, and he is wrestling, um, he is tag teaming with Sting in the Tokyo Dome um, on the 11th of January, I believe, as well. So is this this mm. kind of people honoring, you know, a true pioneer and legend in the Great Muda, or is this okay? We're doing business. Um, from uh, as of right now, it looks like it might be just business because no one does have restrictions. On how they promote it, uh, they're they're not uh, you know uh, they're not forbidden from saying it's you know WWE superstar Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, I'd be mad if they didn't say he was he was WWE uh, superstar. But. Again. This really just does seem like it's the beginning of something larger. It will, you know, it, it starts with, you know, them just happening to let Nakamura work this show. Uh, and then, you know, they're, you know, and then, boom, we, we get a deal with Noah. And I'm thinking this could also be, oh, oh God, uh, what, what was, what was the, what was the name of the, the strategy where, oh, where, When Mark Zuckerberg took Facebook and 
to make Stanford want it, he gave it to surrounding colleges. I think this is kind of a backdoor way to get New Japan's attention. Hmm. Well, I mean, they're already in contact with, um, uh, with New Japan because, I mean, there has to be some type of conversation because Carl Anderson is the current never openly champion in New Japan while also simultaneously being in WWE. Cause, and, it, and obviously New Japan is lending um, Shibata to AEW for some of our reason. Um, He's a new ball washer. Mm. I heard uh, Ron's Cassidy's good at that. Um, yeah, whatever. So, could this kind of be... Do you see this being kind of a monopoly of some sort by WWE? Well, bring in some Nova guys sometimes, we'll bring in some New Japan guys sometimes, as long as they don't uh, be on AEW TV. Or do you think they really care about AEW at all at this point? I think... I think it's the WWE capitalizing on... AEW's consistent fuck ups in the relations department. Um, there, you know, AEW is at, at, at this point a mosquito. Just a pest that can really, you know, can really not do any long-term damage unless, you know, you get Zika. Uh, An alpha? No, I meant the virus. So, but again, this has, it has, this has to mean something. I mean, unless Noah was able to work something out with Nakamura directly, which clearly isn't the case, again, the WWE is, is going to get something out of this. It just remains to be seen what that is. Yes. I'm looking forward to it. It seems uh, interesting to see where it could go. I mean, I, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they take all the Muda stuff they have in the library right now, and then you know they they you know you know bookmark it at the end with Muda Nakamura. Hmm. It's definitely, you know, even you, who isn't really a fan of Japanese pro wrestling, seem really intrigued and interested in well, seeing this match. See, there, there, there's a difference. I, I have been a fan of Japanese wrestling. I was just a much bigger fan at a different time. Hmm. When, you know, when Liger was still in his prime, when Chono was still in his prime, Shinjiro Otani, Masa Saito, uh, Kensuke Sasaki, uh, just to name a few. You know, one of the smartest things I think WCW ever did even though they kind of sacrificed their biggest pay-per-view of the year to do it, was the World Cup of Wrestling for Sharky 95. A best of seven uh, WCW versus 
New Japan, uh, yeah, contest. I mean, yes, it 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 did end up being uh, main evented by first a one uh, by a match where Ric Flair won to get in. To the world title match, which was immediately following, and then Flair won it <laughs> immediately following that. Um, but just it's just you know, I grew up with with Japanese wrestling in a different, really, before it evolved into something a bit more well known. But even even so, I know that having been a fan of the great Muda through you know through all of his you know, transformations, um, that Muda and Nakamura, even even the old even. Old fans and new fans know that's that's a potential money match, and if we know we know Nakamura can can pull his weight, and he could probably carry Buddha to a great match. I mean, I've but, seen Muda wrestle recently, and I mean, he's no, but, he can hold his own. I, I think yeah, that, that, that's that's the thing. Muda can still go. He doesn't need anybody to carry him. Right. So just imagine how much better that's going to be because of that. Oh yeah. This isn't oh old man Muda. No, this is Muda can still go. He just decided that. He's had enough. I mean, I mean, this is like, and essentially, well, yeah, okay. It's being billed as the Great Muda, Rashidsuke Nakamura, but we're getting Kiji Muto versus Shinsuke Nakamura. You can hear that it was Kiji Muto. I heard that it was Muda. Yeah. Yes. It's. It's. It, it, it's. It's Muda, but it, it's like we're go, we're gonna see the best of everything Muda has been in this one match. Hmm. We're seeing the man. We're gonna see the man essentially versus you know take on yeah. you know Nakamura. It's gonna be Muda essentially as we can you know as we see. But we really know it's the man behind the face paint that's really working to make this last match as memorable as possible. Now, we spoke off air about the potential of, you know, the great Muda actually going into the WWE Hall of Fame this year since he is retiring. And maybe even a WrestleMania appearance. How good does that look right now? With all the speculation. As of right now, I I would say if I if I had to put a percentage on it, I'd I'd say. Thirty-three percent for an actual one last match. I I'd, I'd say sixty-six percent for uh, Muda as the uh, the Japanese uh, representative of this year's Hall of Fame class. Well, um. 
I don't know if you know, but uh, they did announce tickets for the Hall of Fame going on sale uh, November 18th. Um, it's it's going to be on SmackDown again this year. Do you... Uh, who do you see... Do you think uh, having Great Muda be announced as the first inductee is going to be a thing? Or do you think... Um, you know, they'll hold off until later on. Because they have to announce somebody is going to be in the Hall of Fame before they actually sell tickets to it, right? Yes, and that's where I think... That's where I, that's where I think The Rock comes in. Well, I, I mean... All we know... Actually... Yes, last year, um, for the Crown Jewel event, they announced that Undertaker was going to be the first inductee. Yeah, and I mean, it, it it would kind of be almost a little bit of really fortuitous storytelling if you know Roman is celebrating his his obvious victory, and all of a sudden. We learn that's when we learn the Rock is being inducted to the Hall of Fame, and he, he Roman gets the spotlight taken off of him. Um, but would be something. I and would maybe also that will appear for his twenty sixth anniversary at Survivor Series. I, w- I I would then say. Muda's reveal for the Hall of Fame is at the Rumble. Okay. With maybe a possible Muda entry. Yeah. Yep. That'd be cool. I mean, I, 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 if I, if I had to pick a you know a WrestleMania match for Muda, I would probably put Muda and Nakamura as a team. Hmm, that'd be interesting. But you do have to realize that uh, the Royal Rumble is much later than the match with Nakamura. It's January 4th with yeah. Noah. And um, I want to say the 23rd is the Rumble? 26? It's definitely in its 20s, so. There's a little, there's a, a, a good amount of time between Rumble yeah. and... Yeah, there, there's, there's enough time to, you know, to let the uh, heat cool down from Muda and Nakamura. I mean... Make a mistake, they will have to, you know, they'll have to do, you know, 14 stars in the Tokyo Dome kind of, you know, kind of a match to make, to make people, to, to kind of shock people into Muda still wanting to go for a couple more months. We shall definitely see. Um, speaking of the Hall of Fame, it's, do you say it's almost confirmed that The Rock is going to be going in this year? I mean, considering how hard the new season of Young Rock has been pushed, um, the, the the Rumble looks to be the most profitable, successful Rumble in the history of the event, which means WrestleMania 39 has the potential to be the most profitable WrestleMania in history as well.
So is that I, 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 no, I, you know, I, I think, I think it's a yes. Okay. Well, I'm more than sure Batista is going in this year as well. Uh, I mean, they gave him the opportunity. Uh, he, he, he did want, they took it away, and then. Batista was, Batista was supposed to be the head, of, was supposed to be the, the marquee inductee. Two years ago, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. At, at COVID mania. Um, and he, he didn't want to do it. No, they... They did hold it back one year to the uh to twenty uh, yeah. thirty seven, and he said I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to come during for a scheduling conflict, but he'll take it in Hollywood because he's going to be there. Yeah. What are other names that you feel could make it into the Hall of Fame this year? I think the I think the one that's really on everybody's mind is Vince himself. Hmm. I mean, the Does investigation has ended. Be in the Hall of Fame? I feel like he would reject that. I mean, there, there's this whole thing about how Vince hates being thanked. I mean. Vince would be the type of guy he'd get up and make his Hall of Fame speech. His Hall of Fame speech would be nothing but I'd like to thank myself. And since I thank myself, I now have to fire myself again. Um, Vince is quite a possibility. Um, I think I think finally we get Cindy Lauper. I feel like that's long awaited. Um, I mean, given uh, you know, with all the stuff they've been doing about the uh, first WrestleMania, um, it was thirty nine years ago. Um, if we're going with uh, let's see. Female, probably Mickey. James. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, she's also on a um. Uh. You know, retirement tour. Um. I'll believe it when I see it. Um, Ultimo Dragon. Ooh, I love that. Uh, to be inducted by Ray. Um, oh, and, and something else long overdue. Demolition. Oh, yeah. You're absolutely right Demolish, that. Demolition inducted by the New Day. Um. Is Brian Pillman in the Hall of Fame? What? Is Brian Pillman in the Hall of Fame? No. Well, I mean, I don't think he, I I don't think he will be. What about the? I mean, if we're talking tag teams, the Hollywood Blondes. Yeah, but the Hollywood Blondes really it, 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 they they were in an era where tag teams ruled professional wrestling. And they were uh, appreciated. Um, what about a potential gold dust induction? That could be great. That if uh, if 
if he's not working for AEW uh, by the time. Um, I think he'll, be, he'll still be working for AEW, but are they really not going to let him go get, you know, inducted? Into the whole uh, thing? Um, it, it's a bad look on AEW. I mean, I, I mean, there's a couple, a couple more here. Um, I think, I think it's, uh, I think it's Psycho, Psycho Sid's time. Oh no, I'm, I'm pretty sure he has a baseball or softball game back there. Um, and if you're gonna induct a rock, maybe you induct Umaga? Oh, maybe. I mean, we could, um, there's a process, if we're doing Gold Dust and Molina. Um... That, that, that's a, a possibility. One I'm hearing a lot about in terms of uh, not an in-ring performer is Joey Styles. Oh, that would be awesome. Joey definitely deserves it. See, see, but I would hold off on Joey Styles for 40. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right about that. Um... I feel like Paul Heyman would be a great headliner for Philly. That's that's possible. Um, if not Mickey James, we may get we could get Victoria. She is from here. Um, I think. I think. I think Ken Shamrock might be a given. But this year? Y yeah. Um. What about Candice Michelle? Yeah. Is she in the whole family? God. I, I think. I think she is. I know Dr. Troy Wilson maybe two, three years ago, but I don't remember, and we got the Bella Twins. I don't remember Candace McCoy. Um, I mean, it, it, it may, it may, uh, it, it might, I mean, if we're talking about female wrestlers, who is really, Left, um, Stacy Keeble. That's the yeah. That's the one. Um, and th then there's somebody else where we're potentially overlooking. That being. The Warrior Award is clearly going to Cena. Is it? There could be I, a possibility of Diamond Dallas Page. It it could it could be Diamond Dallas Page, given that Cena has they've made such a big deal about Cena breaking the Make a Wish uh, record. Didn't they do that, like, years ago? Uh, he did it for wrestlers, and now he's surpassed all of sports. Wow. You know yeah, he's, he, he's at something like 900. You know what? I'd be okay with Cena getting the Warrior Award. Having all of those, fulfilling all of those wishes, <laughs> and, and then, and then you, you you want to see a riot? You make Cena the marquee for forty. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, oh, can, could you put John Cena in the Hall of Fame? Oh, now? absolutely. Kind of oh, a, like, absolutely, absolutely. If you can put Edge in. 
the year following he goes on, he retires following an injury? But I mean, Edge was retired, and like there was no signs of him ever wrestling again. Obviously, that's changed over the last nine years, but Cena is still able to wrestle if he wants to come in and do a match. I mean, the last time he, he did actually wrestle was in the main event of SummerSlam. Uh, I mean, plus in the in the year following the Undertaker's last match, who then went on to say at his Hall of Fame speech, "Never say never." Uh, very true. Could we even see the Undertaker compete at WrestleMania? Uh, no. <laughs> um. <sighs> Maybe a maybe a special uh uh you know uh enforcer. I I would imagine that Floyd Mayweather would be inducted as a celebrity this year. Well, I mean we could go around in circles with this as much as we Right, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's WWE, and they're gonna stop who they want when they want. Maybe finally we'll we'll get Barry Horowitz. They'll be when they uh, do WrestleMania in Jerusalem. <laughs> wrestle, wrestle, Oliveania. Um. And then, and then, of course, we now have the new legacy class, which is a fancy way of saying, oh, uh, the people whose names you can't really remember. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, it seems like WWE is doing good shit right now. Uh, you know, the possibility of the great Muda coming in, uh, maybe even some New Japan guys, some Anobo guys. Um, AEW, they brought Jeff Jarrett. Yeah. Ain't that great, Scooter? Oh, God, I almost choked on my slap nuts. Oh, good God. Um, oh, man. Like, like... Not only do you do a fake out with somebody who, who who somebody with somebody who wore a sting mask, you do you then do a fake out with somebody who actually one time wore sting face paint to fool people. Of, of course, you know he wore the uh, the colorful face paint in you know two thousand. <laughs> Uh, but, Jarrett showing up so soon after essentially cutting ties with the WWE, and then, and then, you know, you know, Road Dog being kind of pulled back and forth, you know, it all, it almost seems like, Jeff Jarrett was okay. Okay, Daddy ass. We couldn't get Road Dog. Will you settle for Jeff Jarrett? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But, but Jarrett it comes in and 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 wax Darby Allen with a guitar, and this is leading to a Sting Jarrett feud. Which which will probably culminate in a fucking blood and guts match. Oh God, no! Uh, I mean, un- I, I mean, unless it's a pool of blood from your head match, in which case Darby's already won that by a mile. Um, Jarrett is the harbinger of doom. A harbinger of doom when he's 
truly made to look like an active competitor. Reason why his in-ring appearances, you know, around his Hall of Fame induction, which, by the way, fuck you, Jeff Jarrett, now, giving me the one interview I can never air, um, which reminds me, hmm, we may ask Jeff Jarrett to be on the show. <laughs> um, you know, the reason why, you know, his one or two appearances, you know, work, because one, there was somebody with a guitar gimmick, and it, 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 it felt good to see, you know, Jeff Garrett do the, you know, strut that we didn't realize was copied from Ric Flair uh, <laughs> when we were eight years old. Um, and, and the why the time is lost with Ric Flair is because the guy was half dead in the ring to begin with, so uh, it made him look good. But Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal, Sanjay Dutt, and and, and they're going to feud with Sting, and fucking my world. His, my world. I, yeah, the, the, the theme music was the best part of this segment. <laughs> because one, it's an, awesome, it's an awesome theme music, and two, it meant that it was over. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's like this segment was like let's say 10 minutes long you know when the best part was? 10.01 and 10 minutes and 1 second was the best part of this segment um God, this is Tony Khan is apparently stooping Dixie Carter, uh, given his weird booking decisions. I think Dixie is glad to be out of the pro wrestling business. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Ooh, oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Dixie Carter for the Hall of Fame. Ooh! I feel like you're you're saying it like a joke, but I feel like that would be a really cool thing. If, if they I th I know I I think it would too, and it would fit so well with the fact that the WWE can do so much better in getting under AEW skin. Yeah, I, I, um, I don't know about it. Stop them all. <laughs> uh, uh, this is, like, boy, I am glad they, they snagged, they, 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 that Triple H knew, locked AJ fucking down. Put, put, put him in, put him, put him in shackles if you have to, but don't let him go. I don't think AJ is leaving anytime soon. I think no. he knows that this is, um, I don't want to say the twilight of his career, but it's definitely where he's going to be ending his career. I mean, you know, <laughs> given how stupid the booking decisions have been, I would not be surprised if we see AEW give us the return we've all been waiting for. The return of Air Paris. Air Paris. I feel like this is a reference that's going straight over my head. See, everybody associates AJ with TNA. Yes. I was there for AJ's WCW run. And he was put in a cruiserweight tag team with a guy named Air Paris. Oh, God. Do we even know if this guy is still alive? 
let alone yes, yes he, he is. is he is uh air paris whose uh real name is frank paris um he's 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 actually still friends with aj to this day um they did they did you know uh, in train together um but literally yeah aj and air paris uh many people don't even realize this i mean they probably couldn't you probably even couldn't call their time in WCW a run because you know when they debuted? When? February 2001. Oh god. <laughs> One month later. Literally on Valentine's Day 2001 they debuted on Thunder <laughs> where they lost to Evan Courageous and Jamie Noble. Those two names you haven't heard in a while. Um, their only win they ever got February 21st, 2001 against the Boogie Knights. Alex Wright and Disco Inferno. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God, but so, I mean, Jeff Jarrett, yeah. I mean, as, as a, you know, booker or whatever, creative mind in pro wrestling, I don't mind him. I think he actually has maybe some good knowledge to eschew onto AEW if they actually listen to him. Um, that I being mean, said, they're not busy choking on his slap nuts. He has no business being in front of the, the camera anymore. It's, I it's mean, just exposing how... It's exposing him to something that... It's exposing his weaknesses at this point. And, I mean, I'm not buying a ticket to see Jeff Jarrett, honestly. I mean, I, I, I was really thinking, you know what this over-bloated, over roster really needs? Jeff Jarrett? I was going to say Splinters, but yes, Jeff Jarrett. Uh, G-O, uh, G-E-O-F-F. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> Just because my middle name happens to be spelled that way. Well, that's how you spell Jeff Jarrett. No, it's so, all yeah. So big F, big U, big C, big K, huge U. Are you telling me to eat at Subway? Sure, why not? Well, Let's go with that spell. since I don't get this. <laughs> don't Subway. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. He eat that food. Ooh, which is Subway. Hey, um, and what about that Cole Carter? Like, the, the crowd went fucking wild for him. Like, oh. He exposed himself as the big skin. You could have just stopped and exposed himself, and it probably would have uh, sounded better. Um, oh. And the, the saying, and the crowd goes mild, is an understatement. They, they put the mask up, and I was like, who is this motherfucker? Like, it's... Uh, stung? Was it supposed to be uh, Steve Borden Steve Borden Jr.? Um, For a second thought there, I thought it was Jack Tomlinson. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh-oh. His channel has been renamed Cole Carter Vlogs. 
Yeah. Alright. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I need a brain enema. Now, uh, it's been, uh, reported, uh, that Kevin Owens had some plans. Those plans are on hold because, um, those plans involved Sami Zayn and the Usos, and, um, people are thinking what Sami Zayn's doing with the Usos. Um, they feel it's very Usy. So, um... And once kind of the spectrum, I'm kind of upset because I love me some Kevin Owens. But on the other end, this is probably the best job Sami Zayn has ever done in his whole entire career. I mean, when did did, did anybody actually think that it was going to go the way where we see Roman actually taking a liking to Sammy. It definitely evolved a lot further than I, I had originally expected. But it does make me even more interested in seeing... My personal feelings about it is, Sammy's the most dangerous guy in WWE. Because Roman trusts him right now. And he's not blood related bloodline. So, you know. As far, as far as we know. When he's ready, to, he's the red headed stepchild. Um, so, you know, when he's ready to turn on the Usos and Roman, you know, he could cause a lot of damage. I mean, I mean we could also see uh, the first ever 23andMe uh, match. Where, you know, a loser gets their DNA examined. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they end up going the way where Sammy claims that he learns he actually is part Samoan. Oh, God. Uh, but then, then we see the debut of a mysterious new guy named El Jean Rico. Hmm, interesting. But, um, Sammy's doing the best work he's ever done, right? Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it kind of sucks that he refuses to ever participate in the Saudi Arabia show. Uh, um, I, I don't blame him. I was just going to say that. I, I, I don't blame him for, uh... What, what the country has done in the past, um, I to Syria. I believe Sammy is Syrian, so... Yes, Sammy is Syrian. He is... He's a serious Syrian. Oh, oh God, I... I that oh, up, like, no, I was gonna, like, he's... He's, he, he's going... <laughs> he's going super serious. And that's when that's when his head gets really fucking red. Uh, it's blonde, Scooter. Damn it. Yeah, that. But I didn't say Super Saiyan. I said Super Syrian. There is a difference. I mean, or the Syrians usually have. I don't know. Get your Dragon Ball Z references straight before you you just say red hair. I mean, okay, Goku goes from black to blonde. You can't make the assumption that everybody goes to blonde. Well, there are in some cases where you go blue. And it's clear that Sammy has certainly blown uh, somebody to get this job. Uh, no. uh, we're way off topic here. Uh, yes, Sa Sammy has been the most entertaining he has been in uh, quite some time. If, if he... We know he can be th that mouthpiece. We know he can play that cunning heel 
now we kind of really need to see him play Puppet Master. And it seems like he is. With what's going on with him and uh, Jay. Now, here's something that crosses into my mind. What if Sammy's playing the long con? I said that. When, when he's ready to double cross the... But but it's at the back. It's then it turns out him and O K O were playing Roman all along. It's that's actually kind of a good segment uh, feud. If they, if they oh God, you know, I I would even say. They could probably No, I think I'm saying they could probably get something with KO out of it. I still think they're probably they're probably gonna do Roman KO as a throwaway at the rumble. It did Roman and I know. Doesn't mean uh, it only it can happen again. There's nothing that says, "Oh, you can't do this again." But I mean, case in point, uh, Bianca and Bailey. Speaking of, uh, which there's one more match with you know, for the Crown Jewel event. Uh, Which has already happened. It's over. Well, let's get off give our predictions, even though it might be even it might be over by now. Alexa Bliss and Asuka defend the war the no the women's tag team championships against um Dakota Kai and Io Sky. Who wins? Scooter. Who won? Um, actually, the winner. The winner's already won. The winner is already won. Okay, cool. Alright, um... Plus, you have any bit, uh, bit, bit of news? Uh, I think you should get out of here. Um... Yeah, because my, my, my hookers have just shown up. That'll conclude this episode. Oh, thank you for listening. If you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, comment, comment, vote on YouTube and Fox. Plus, it's sponsored by Rogue Energy and Phil Coffee. Join us this Tuesday as we interview uh, Eliza Hayes and uh, this Wednesday when we interview uh, Sam Field. Uh, if you you can follow the show at Wrestling with E, but on Twitter and Instagram for information on who we're interviewing, when we're interviewing them, links to those interviews, and so much more. Uh, if you follow me personally at JamesJane993, you can follow Felipe at I am Felipe, and where can we find Scoot? As always, find me on Twitter at ScooterDust. Find me, James and Ryan Dust. Coming to you live with the remix on YouTube, a premier audio companion experience for all your alternate commentary needs for WWE Premium Live Events. Next time we come to you, Survivor Series War Games. And of course, watch as I hilariously embarrass myself as I embark on my first ever Dungeons and Dragons campaign, which kicks off November 15th. Along with me and Rico Cusito Jr. and the rest of the Smoking Dragons clan, twitch.tv backslash Smoking Dragons. Well, Coleco Yachts and Skid of Dust, I'm James Shea, and this has been Wrestling with Entertainment. Gonna come get your hookers! Hey guys, this is Brutal Bob Evans from Hangs with Bob Seminars and TheWrestleLife.com, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment, one of my favorite podcasts in the whole wide world.
Hey folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show, support these guys, we appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.